Welcome back everybody and in this video I'm going to show you how to do some simple bead roll door panels on a 1953 Chevy truck. <laughs> So there's several things that we need to accomplish with this door panel. Um, we have this kind of rough area here along with the door latch arm um, that sticks out and over that recessed area. And I, I'll link that to a video on how we ended up fixing that portion. Um, you can see that there's quite a bit of gap between the window crank and the door crank. Um, also that there's uh, th the window regulator bolts, they kind of stick out a little bit. To, so you know, just sticking a kind of flat panel on the door um, isn't going to work. So what we want to do first is make a rough template out of cardboard, piece of paper, whatever you got laying around. Transfer that over to, I'm using 18 gauge steel, just making kind of a simple pattern in the middle here with a one inch border along the outside. That'll give it kind of almost like a, a three step uh, look on the finished panel. Uh, I'm using a Mittler's 36 inch deep throat bead roller. Comes with several different tips uh, right out of the box. I'm using this just kind of a simple step up or step down die. And uh, we, we go ahead and get that clamped in. Uh, I always kind of start in the middle of the design and kind of work my way out. So if you have any warping issues or anything like that with the steel, um, you can, you know, if you have them, you can shrink or stretch it at that time. Probably better to do that at the beginning, but I don't know, I'm not as proficient on a bead roller as I am a sewing machine. Uh, <clears throat> when you're starting this, you definitely want to make sure you count how many times you're going around uh, to, to clamp that steel because you want to mimic that depth, that, that pressure when you go and do the outside or that outside edge there or, or any other uh, design if you got two or three things going on in your panel. Um, so you'll see that I, I count how many times I, I go and start and stop. Uh, that way when I when I go back and I do my, my outside edge, it'll, it'll be the same raised distance. Now, you kinda wanna take your time if you have any kind of curves, um, especially like the tight curves that I'll, I'll run into in the corners and towards the kind of the, the tail end of this piece. Um, what's nice about the Mittler Brothers, you know, power feed, um, it allows you to use both hands so you don't have to sit there and kind of crank with one hand as you're trying to feed the piece of metal or try to go around and make a turn. You can, you can feed that through, you have lots of control because you're using both hands and, and it has a variable speed. So you can speed it up or slow it down depending on the piece that you're working on. So you notice when I come up to this tighter corner, you want to kind of keep it a consistent, smooth action as, you, as you're going around. You know, any kind of like jerking or stopping and turning the panel without the machine going, you get what, I, I don't know what to call it. I call it like chatter. You can see like the start and stop marks. It's like sharp bends. Um, and you want to eliminate as much of that as possible because you could go back over it. You know, you could probably get away with that in like a, like a straight line. You get a little bit off, um, but in a curve, it's almost, I shouldn't say impossible, it's difficult to go back over that, um, that same exact line to, to smooth anything out. So just make sure, you know, take your time, do it right, do it once. So once you've completed kind of your 
first design or insert design or you know whatever you end up doing um, you know make sure you keep track like I said before how many times you went around because you want to clamp that down at the same pressure so the, the panels have that same depth of look that same uh, gradual step down as as the other design you know especially if you had two I don't know, rectangles or whatever odd shapes side by side you want to make sure that those are the same distance just to give it a lot more professional look when it's done. Now Mittler Bros makes you know several different uh, bead rollers you know they make deep necks like this they make shallow ones I think they make a hand crank one too and you know they're not the only game in town but uh, uh, the reason I went with them you know they were they were priced right um, and you know I, I definitely knew I needed a deep throat one um, for some of the larger panels and stuff that we do. The foot feet is, I don't know, I, I think that's almost a must. You know, like I said before, you need that control to handle longer, awkward shaped panels. Um, by, by no means am I sponsored by Mittler Bros, but if they are watching, my email's in the description, so you know how to get a hold of me to, if you want to, you know, send me some new tools or stuff. You know, I'm not going to say no to that. <laughs> But uh, I don't know, but by no means am I a, a expert bead roller by any means, but um, you know, the, this, this panel, is, it's, it's definitely on the simpler side, and that was kind of the goal with this, is to show you guys some you know, simple but effective uh, bead rolling um, to make, make a pretty cool door panel. You know, if you want to see some really intricate stuff, then um, check out Jamie Jordan. Um, that guy is a wizard behind a bead roller um, and, and if you've seen some of his work you know comment down below you know tell me tell me what's the coolest one that he's that he's done you know I, I think that uh, oh geez what was it, it was like some samurai looking thing um, that 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 thing was completely badass and So that's uh, after I got it ran through the bead roller and on the edge. Um, I think it turned out pretty good. So what we'll do next is we'll take it in the glue room. Um, you can wrap it now with any kind of vinyl, leather, um, whatever you want to kind of finish off the door panel with it. I mean, you, could, you can't even paint it. Um, but for, for this project, we're, we're doing a kind of a light gray vinyl. Um, so first thing we do is we spray both sides the panel and the vinyl itself with a contact adhesive uh, I'm using Wellwood's contact adhesive but you can use um, something like a like a 3M uh, contact adhesive it, it comes in a aerosol can you can probably pick that up at any you know hardware um, supply store that you know, or that's near you So now grab your material and go ahead and set that on top of your panel. 
uh, making sure that you're pressing along any of the indentations or bump ups that you put into your panel. You want to make sure that you really got good coverage with the glue uh, on any of those uh, seams like that um, so, you, so it doesn't uh, leave like little like little air bubble pockets in that corner. Make it, uh, it'll make the panel really stand out a lot better if you don't have any of those inconsistencies going on. Next with your contact adhesive, you want to flip that panel um, back over and we'll put a, you know, a liberal amount of glue around the edge um, to wrap that material on over. Um, you can kind of cut out any of the bulk um, if you know you're going to have way too much material wrapping around, you know, just get that cut out of the way now so you're not dealing with it um, when you're trying to wrap it around, especially in the corners, that, that's where it's going to help to get rid of that excess material. After you get the material wrapped over, um, go ahead and take your pair of scissors and kind of cut those little, oh, I call them little darts that are that build up in the corner. You don't want that extra material there, um, so when you go to put the door panel on, um, that it will it'll hold the door panel out. So you want to get rid of all of that so you have a nice tight fit. And just like that, you know, our, our panel's really coming together. Um, from here, you know, you, you drill your holes, obviously, for whatever you're going to use to mount it. I ended up using screws in the, the factory slots, but you can tell with us, you know, raising that panel on two steps, it kind of took care of any of the gappage that we would have had in the window uh, crank and door crank area. So if you guys found this useful, hit like and subscribe. 
and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys.